Hey everybody, it's Raven Ways. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about how the upcoming lunar eclipse at 8 degrees Gemini on November 30th is going to affect you personally, how it's going to affect you. Now, I talked about the upcoming eclipse before, but I kind of talked about it in terms of how it shows up in the American uh, natal chart or mundane chart, um, which is the US chart number one or Sibley chart. Okay, but now I'm going to talk about it on a personal level because a lot of people have been in touch with me and they're saying, okay, like, how is this going to affect me, this, this Gemini lunar eclipse? So I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, I'm not an academic on any level. I'm just an astrologer out there talking about like interesting uh, astrology and things that are happening, you know, in the sky and how it might affect us on Earth. But anyway, the lunar eclipse is basically a lining up. Okay, an alignment of the sun, earth in the middle and moon outside. And basically the the earth's shadow is what causes the lunar eclipse. Now, lunar eclipses tend to be sort of I find when it comes to how they will affect you, they affect your ego in some way. So your ego will be sort of wrapped up in this lunar eclipse in some way. And because it's in the sign of Gemini, right, it's about how you think, um, how what your story is, right? Um, and, and it's about your how you tell your story, okay? Now, the way I see eclipses, and I'll always see them this way, they're very unpredictable, Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. I just find them a bit shocking um, because it's in the sign of Gemini. Maybe your story is going to change. Maybe you're ready for a new story about yourself. Uh, maybe you start thinking about something um, about yourself personally and uh, how you see yourself. Or maybe it, it involves your memories. Okay, because do you know a lunar eclipse, very intense about the ego, about you and how you think. And because it's an eclipse and there's, a, you know, obviously a little shadow involved. I mean, in this one, it's not a full lunar eclipse. It's just, you know, like the dragon's head, the north node eclipse that it is. It's like the dragon's head just, you know, the dragon just takes a little bite of the moon for this eclipse coming up. Okay, but because it's an eclipse, it tends to... Ah, it just intensifies memory, especially in Gemini. Gemini, of course, is the sign about the mental processes. And because the, the, the lunar eclipse tends to be about the ego and, how, and, you know, us personally, and maybe our personal or strong personal relationships, uh, it's going to be about our story and what we think our story is. And I know it sounds kind of strange, but you know what well i'll tell you what i'm planning to do right on this lunar eclipse i'm i'm going to try to um like most lunar eclipses i'm not going to try to do too much i find that sometimes if you if during a lunar eclipse the best thing to do is just um stay grounded right um be prepared for surprises and this one in particular could be about a, a change in in your thoughts or a change in the way you see yourself or maybe somebody tells you something because, you know, Gemini is an air sign, involves a lot of chit chat, a lot of talk. Maybe somebody tells you something about yourself that's very unexpected and unpredictable. Lunar eclipses bring unexpected things that really affect us personally. That's just from my own experience in, you know, in, in, in waiting for these, um, you know, lunar eclipses. And it depends on what sign they're in. You know, um, a lunar eclipse, let's say, uh, in the sign of Taurus um, may bring sort of something unexpected in my material world. The same thing uh, with Capricorn. You can't necessarily pigeonhole an eclipse as evil or brilliant or anything. It's just so strange how it affects people. And so that's why I always say um, kind of treat it like a Mercury retrograde where you, you know, don't don't go in with big expectations, do you know? And the weird thing about this lunar eclipse, um, like I said, it's it's in it's a dragon's head lunar eclipse. So, and it, being in the sign of Gemini, it's going to be consuming. You're going to be thinking a lot about yourself and how you maybe put yourself out there, how you present yourself. Um, when the, uh, when the lunar eclipse passes and we go in that sort of twilight time between the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse, there's going to be a lot of thinking about 
just how you know how you think like how you're thinking about things and you might be thinking in a very Gemini way you know taking a look at multiplicity of ideas or you might start thinking like you know just like the you know the Gemini twins do very indecisive or this way or that way or take a look at both sides of every argument or both sides of your life both sides of opinions people may have of you okay but it is very personal and it is about your story and um, you know you may have one of those experiences like those aha experiences during this this eclipse where it's like, my God, why did I think that way? Maybe it's something different. Maybe I should be thinking in a different way. Or maybe, you know, just like the sign of Gemini that the lunar eclipse takes place in, like I said, maybe you should see the flip side of something, do you know? So it's kind of interesting like that. And like I was saying, like af after, <laughs> after, I can't get all those words out there, it's hard. <laughs> after it moves from Gemini, um, into Sagittarius, and that's the solar eclipse that takes place on December 14th at 23 degrees Sagittarius. That eclipse is going to be um, about letting uh, certain ideas about yourself or what people think about you go, okay? Because that's a south node eclipse, and um, it's a very powerful one, so, you know, solar eclipse, and it's a total solar eclipse, if I have that correct. And so, you know, Anything that you find out about yourself, maybe during this lunar eclipse that you don't like, um, when uh, K2 or the dragon's tail gets involved in the in the solar eclipse that's coming up on December 14th, very, very close to the Saturn-Jupiter uh, conjunction, the great conjunction, do you know, on the 21st, right, of December, right? This big solar eclipse in Sagittarius is time to l maybe let things go uh, about yourself that you don't like or you want to change. And um, just like the sign Sagittarius itself, you know, you might be, you know, you might decide to uh, evolve a bit with some of your ideas or opinions about yourself, or um, maybe you might want to let go all of that mental chatter because sometimes that, you know, monkey mind is really present in the sign of Gemini, you know, on its shadow side, right? Gemini is a sign, can be pretty monkey mind. Maybe you decide to do something big um, before, you know, just before the solar eclipse and let go some things that have been distracting you or decide to focus yourself a little bit differently. Maybe focus yourself more on higher ground or, you know, take the higher ground on something that normally you wouldn't and, oh, there's a lot of potential. Um, are you going to change the story about yourself? Do you know? Maybe it's time for you to change the story, right? That's how I'm approaching um, this lunar eclipse and solar eclipse. But yeah, so things that can intensify in Gemini, your thoughts about yourself, um, how you express yourself, how other people may um, talk to you or communicate with you. Maybe something intense happens there because the lunar eclipse is about intensity uh, and unpredictableness. So you have to stay grounded, um, you know, leading up to November 30th like that. You know, I sometimes treat like I, I think I might have said this in the video. I don't know, but I do treat it a little bit like a Mercury retrograde to a certain extent like I just don't put a whole lot of expectations on the day and I definitely don't do any magic because I don't trust eclipses at all um, and of course I don't look up at the eclipse some people like to um, I don't um, I don't have, I mean, I have more of a, I guess, maybe a traditional astrological view with eclipses. I don't always see them as uh, enlightening or, um, you know, necessarily. I think that they can really surprise us. And that's the best thing I can say about that. So um, be careful with your opinions on that day. Um, and maybe just be a little bit more careful about expressing yourself and um, also be kinder to yourself and how you think about yourself. And if you feel that this lunar eclipse is a great time to maybe think about what is consuming your mind, what's taking up all the space in your brain, maybe it's time for some of that to, to go. Do you know? Go the way of, uh, by the next, um, by the, you know, the following eclipse, which is a solar eclipse on the 14th. That's a south node eclipse. And south node eclipses are always about, you know, letting shit go, letting it go. Uh, and maybe there's a, 
a very Sagittarius reason behind letting something go in your life. Maybe maybe you're ready for a brand new philosophy or brand new religion. You know, Sagittarius is a sign that loves uh, spirituality and different kinds of spirituality. So maybe it's time, um, you know, during the solar eclipse on December 14th before the Great Conjunction to get on the high road to study a new religion. Um, or to study a, a type of meditation that serves your mind better. Do you know? Um, there's just so many possibilities. I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm really looking for something good during these eclipses. But I'll tell you, there's a really special time between the lunar and solar eclipse that is very... Um, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a magical time. It's a very I call it the twilight zone, twilight time, where um, especially between Sagittarius and 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 Gemini, both mutable signs, where there's a lot of changes and maybe the way uh, your thinking goes, and uh, you know, might you really might surprise yourself with how you turn out in the next month or so. Um, yeah, time. It's always time for um, a new way of looking at your spiritual approach to life. Do you know? And that's what I'm going to try to use um, these upcoming eclipses for. You know, um, new approaches in my spiritual thinking. So, best of luck, everyone. Blessings. <laughs>